Hey toy fans, Aaron here. Today, we're checking out the Power of the Force 2 ADAT. So let's head to that table and check this one out. Taking a look at the packaging, as I already mentioned, this is the Power of the Force 2 ADAT. This was released in 97, and with that came the change from the orange boxes to the green boxes, that green lightsaber in the background. You get a great image of the toy on this little fantasy snow hoth planet. In the upper left corner, you got it saying, with real movie sounds, light up laser cannons, launching laser missiles, Star Wars Power of the Force logo just down at the bottom on top of that Imperial Ad Ad Walker logo. And to the right side, you get a look at the exclusive figures that were included, that being the Ad Ad Commander and Ad Ad Driver. One thing you might notice on this is that this has a sticker placed in this uh, area for the legs. This was a running change. This box, as you'll see in a moment on the back side, is .00. .00. Later it was released where that wasn't a sticker anymore, that was all printed. Don't know why that's the case here, but anyways, that would be a .01 release on the back of your packaging. And a little cutout in the center of the box so that you can try out the different sounds yourself. And on the top of the packaging, you got an image of the toy, and then also in this case, showing off the light-up panel on the inside of the vehicle. This side here is the same on both sides. You're just showing off some various features, playability aspects of the vehicle itself. And then on the back side, well, it lays out all your various features of the vehicle. You got a nice image of the toy that you're getting. And then off on the other side, you got the light up control panel being shown off, the cockpit being opened up, the cannons that light up, and then also the laser launchers that shoot out. You got your the photo showing off that you can hang a Luke Skywalker from the uh, lightsaber and pull them on up. And then, of course, the head action being controlled by a hand on the inside. Bottom right corner, you got a great image from the movie of the walkers being shown off with snow speeders flying around them with a little bit of bio information about them. And there's that dot zero zero that I mentioned earlier. Any changes in the packaging would always increase that dot zero number by one digit. Taking a look at this out of the packaging, well, I mean, it's your vintage looking at it. It's what you remember from your childhood if you're as old as me. There are some minor differences to this. The, the missile launchers on the side of the vehicle are a little bit different than what was on the previous uh, vintage version. And then the addition of some electronics on the inside of the cargo area uh, that weren't there before. Otherwise, though, what you're getting is pretty much, from what I can tell from photos, the same vehicle. Again, probably just some minor differences in the sculpting. And certainly there's some we uh, weathering on this vehicle as well that I don't believe was on the original. One thing also different about this vehicle that... Hasbro was doing for some reason in this line when it launched in 95. The gray vehicles in the line, the X-Wing, the Snow Speeder, and certainly this one that, that were all gray, had these black speckles uh, throughout the plastic of the vehicle for some reason. I'm not a fan of that. I'm not sure why it's there. I don't know if it's supposed to give it this dirty look or something. It just doesn't do much for me though. Otherwise though, this vehicle does stand 18 and a half inches tall, which for those of you that are wondering the differences between this and the big ADAT that came out in 2010, well here you go. Obviously the 2010 ADAT stands much taller, but you know, the idea behind that, I mean that's a totally different ball game of a vehicle. You get a much different playability feature with that one than you do with this walker here. Anyways, out of the box, you did have a little bit of assembling to do, and with the electronics in this vehicle, it does take three AA batteries that you just insert into this center portion here of the uh, cargo area. No big deal, just unscrew the screw, pop the batteries in, and replace the screw, and you're good to go. Taking a closer look at this thing, I think the best area is to start with the head of the vehicle. We're just gonna hit each section piece by piece here, but un so really to get into that head area, unfortunately, because this whole thing works with the little hand mechanism inside the uh, cargo area, um, the head always sits down, kind of limp down. So that's one minor bummer of the vehicle. But otherwise, of course, the sculpt is looking great. The design, the sculpting of this head area really is looking quite good. You've got lots of little like panel detailing and, and such sculpted and molded throughout the entire thing. Of course, along the top of the canopy, you got the same thing going there. And then on the other side of the vehicle, pretty much a mirrored image of what you have on the other. Uh, you got your guns on the side of the head also. And then, of course, your little laser cannons at the bottom of the canopy as well. I'll get into the electronics and the movement of all these things later. And these have some actions features to it. So, again, right now, concentrating on the sculpting, molding, painting. At the front of the vehicle, you've got a little sticker here that you placed on yourself. Inside the canopy, the top part just flips right open. And in here, you can fit two figures. They're a smidge cozy, but still no problem doing that. And of course, lid closes just fine. The only thing you got going on for detailing in there is this sticker that you placed in. Otherwise, a little bit of pattern on the seats, and that's all you're getting in there. But still, it does the job it needs to do, which is give you a place to put your action figures. 
And same thing on the underneath side of this canopy. Again, lots of sculpting, just details in the mold throughout here. Now, as I already mentioned, you do have a handle inside that back cargo area where you can maneuver that head around. No problem getting a hand in there, even the size of mine, so you can maneuver that, uh, twisting side to side. And then you can slide that handle forward to lift the head up and down. So you get a great range of motion with that. No hindrance to moving the head around. And getting into the main body of the vehicle, this cargo area, again, still a great sculpt and pretty decent weather detailing throughout the entire vehicle, uh, throughout the entire side and such. All these little dips in the panels and everything sticking out pretty much has some weathering underneath it to make it look like, you know, rain and weather had fallen. As I mentioned with the head, sculpting on each side of this main body is just mirrored on each side, minus the hole to stick your hand in to open the canopy door. And the fact that there's a door on the one side, the other side does not have a door on it. And on the top of the vehicle in that cargo area, you got nice sculpting, detailing again through there. Just little bits of panels and whatnot kind of sticking out there. Just again, kind of brings the item to life a little bit. Certainly makes it look a little more realistic. I mean, you know, not overly realistic, but it just makes for a good looking toy. Inside this canopy where we already opened it earlier to put the batteries in. Nice little bit of space in here to do some stuff. Now, I, like I said, I think I said already, I did not have the vintage at at when I was a kid. But I'm pretty sure this electronic device area was not in the original toy. So I believe that is all new to this. Nice detailing to it. Uh, it's a little light up screen here that it cycles through when it hits a certain voice and phrase. I'll show that a little later. Otherwise though, it's pretty cool looking. Back side in here, I don't know if that's enough light, but that's where your speaker is for showing the stuff. Nice little Galactic Empire symbol on the front of the speaker. On this front area, you do have one, two, three, four, five foot pegs in there for holding figures up. So you got a little bit of play area in there. On the other side of this center section, you got this little, well, actually it, it looks very much like the uh, tow cable little adapter for the snow speeder. Uh, it just kind of slides into place. It does not stay on well. Mine continually falls off. But anyways, so you got that on the side here. You can pull the string through and it makes like a really an overgrown lightsaber that you could stick a figure on. Presumably you're putting Luke Skywalker on there and you can raise and lower him up and down just like he sliced the bottom of it with his lightsaber. So you got that going for you. And then when you're not using it, you just wrap it back around when you want it out of the way. On the back end of the walker, nice sculpting and detailing, still continuing through there. Uh, for some reason, a little darker in this spot here. Maybe that's where they empty the waste from? Maybe? As for the bottom side of this center section, well, you still got some sculpting and stuff going on in there. Little round part that I do believe was like what we saw in the movie or what the ad at should have. Uh, again, just little designs in there to bring it to life a bit. No special painting or anything. But nevertheless, even though it's the bottom side, still filled out and looking pretty good. As for the legs of the vehicle, all four of these are exactly the same as the other. As I've already mentioned before, nice sculpting all throughout these legs. The weathering, as with the rest of the vehicle, continues through here. One thing, unfortunately, all that weathering is on the outer shell of the legs. On the back side of the legs, which is on the inside of the vehicle, no special weathering, detailing, or anything there. It is plain. On the upper half of the leg, it's a little bit hollow. But on the bottom half, it's got it flushed out, filled in with some plastic. So it is somewhat finished out, whereas, you know, just like the ATDP from Rebels that I reviewed, you know, that whole inside of the leg was hollowed out. So in this case, you got a little bit of finished off detailing, just no weathering on the inside to match. And then these legs do have some good articulation with that as well. Of course, this is not the ATACT. It's all, you know, based on what we had as a kid, nothing motorized. So you're going to position these legs however you want. Good clicking to it. They're nice and sturdy. Very sturdy. So really, I guess to give you the whole range, well, that's as far as you're going with the legs uh, out that way. And it goes pretty far the other way. So, you know, really anything you're going to want to do with the legs, you're pretty much going to be able to pose it how you want. The bottoms of the feet are loose. They're going to just go with however you position the legs. It's going to stay pretty stable. So no problem getting this guy standing up again, however you want. Now, as for the electronics of this vehicle, getting back inside this cargo area, you got three buttons on this center console and the little lights up top. Hitting this first button on the left side.
And then that second one that you just heard where it's very reminiscent of the walker coming down and crushing the snow speeder. It took me multiple runs throughs to finally get that second sound. Uh, so it does indeed do two different ones. Just going to take a while to cycle through for some reason. And hitting that middle button gets you some laser sounds. Just three quick little bursts there. And the far button on the right side. Target, maximum firepower. Now the other lights and sounds that you get are on the head of the vehicle, these little laser cannons here at the bottom. There is a lever right here that you got to slide back and forth to activate both the sounds and the lights. And you, you really got to give it a jolt. If, if, if you do it kind of lightly, you're not going to activate that for some reason. So I, I don't know if that's something on mine where it was touchy. I remember it being that way right out of the box. Uh, so anyways, I'm going to cut some lights, so hopefully these will show up a little bit better. So I don't think that showed up too well. Obviously, the sounds are pretty good. Um, you get a decent glow throughout the end of these little clear plastic tubes. Uh, obviously, very much brighter at the end, so it's not as vibrant, but it is a little bit more than what's showing up on the camera. And then also, you got these side cannons here on the head of the vehicle little button on the back side and you just give that a little slide forward and that's going to launch these out hold that in place better so there we go not really a strong launching action to it more of a little out a couple inches and plop as you saw so i think that pretty well covers the vehicle time to move on to the two included figures starting first with the ad at driver looking at him head to toe things are looking pretty good actually things are looking really good i this is a great update to a figure that we had from the vintage line he is still a little bit more muscular than we like our figures to be than i like my figures to be anyways obviously uh the power of the force 2 line they started out very beefy and then as the year or two went on they did start to tone down those muscles so here a little bit toned down, but still a little bit excessive on the muscle side. Helmet sculpting, looking really good. Uh, you got the Empire logo on each side of the helmet on the top. A little bit of black with some blue uh, dots there at the center of the helmet. Each side of the face mask. You got this little hose running down the side with a little bit of baby blue paint to that. And some gray on the side as well. Eye area of the mask is looking really good. Mouth area with the little red line in the center of the black is looking good. Nicely defined lines at the chin area of the mask, those three lines on each side, and then the silver and silver and red dot on the front face of the mask as well, or helmet rather. As it rolls around to the back side, nice coloring to that hose coming down around the back of the helmet, and some good kind of metallic painting to the back side of the helmet where those hoses go into. Chest area of the figure, of course, this little chest box, lots of great detailing on there with the paint job of it. Uh, you got some gray knobs, yellow knobs and stuff painted in there. Of course, the black side's looking good. You got a silver side to that area as well with some red painting in there and black. Overall, just really a great paint job done on this figure. On the back of the figure, no skimping here. You got some nice detail to the sculpt and then just a fantastic paint application through this area also with the blacks, the silver, a little bit of white and red thrown in there also. As for the arms of them, again, pretty muscular, but otherwise great sculpting really to the entire uniform of the figure. The shoulder armor pieces are looking quite good. Nice shiny white paint to that. Nice gray painting for the, uh, well, it's probably not painting, I suppose. That's probably the color of the molded plastic. The sculpting of the cloth is looking really good. And even on the side of his left arm, kind of have like a little pouch and stuff in there. Nice little baby blue painting on the side of his white glove. And then for the rest of the figure waist down, still things looking pretty good. Of course, you got the little flight suit straps and stuff painted in. The paint job to those are looking pretty good. Minor overspray here and there. And then, of course, I do have a little blob of paint right on the top of his thigh for whatever reason. But aside from that, great sculpt to the legs. And boots looking good with a nice paint job to those. As far as the articulation goes, well, you get your swiveling in the head. And no problem with this chest piece here. It's nice and soft. Obviously, it's going to look awkward as it swings around. But good movement in the head. 
Your arm area, of course, just going to get your shoulders going up and down. You do get some swiveling in the waist area, though, so that's a little bit extra than what we usually got at that time. And then, of course, the legs both come forward, as they should. He needs to sit in that cockpit, and uh, they even go back quite a ways there. Heading on now to General Veers. Overall, a good-looking figure, and you know, for some reason, this guy, I'd say, proportionately with the muscle tone, is much more in line where I would expect a figure like this to be. At the head area, great sculpting to the helmet, nice paint job with the dark, uh, dark gray? I'd say that's gray. Dark gray lines running around the edge of the helmet. The goggles sculpted on there have a nice paint job to them. As far as the sculpt of the face, it looks pretty close to what I saw in the movie. It's, you know, I mean... For something where the plastic is filling out the sides of the helmet in that back area on the side of the face and stuff, it's still a decent resemblance to the to the actor in the movie. As it spins around, you see there's little uh, knobs and stuff sculpted into the helmet. So definitely, again, giving a little more life to that plastic. At the chest area, of course, he's wearing the... What kind of armor would that be? But he does have some little armor strapped on over the Imperial officer suit. Nice sculpting to that, nice painting with little reds and blues at the ranking area. And then, of course, down on the middle area, more red knobs, blue knobs, white knobs and stuff painted in there. So pretty good paint job with that. As far as the arms, again, as you expect, sculpted cloth detailing, nice little wrinkles here and there to kind of show that he's got some movement in the arms going on. And then some black gloves painted onto the figure. To the waist area, you got a black belt painted in. Very minimal overspray on that, so I'd say things looking pretty good there. And then even a little holster sculpted into the side of his right thigh. It's not usable, doesn't come with a weapon, but does make for just some added detailing to the figure. Otherwise, the rest of the legs, pretty decent sculpting to them. And then for the boots, of course, as you'd expect, you got the Imperial boots, nice black paint job to those. As far as the articulation here, of course, that head does swivel around, no problem. The arms both go up and down, no problems with that. He too also gets some swiveling at the waist and then both legs do come out straight no problem and then they even go back quite a bit. Also to note for both of these figures no accessories included no weapons or anything else. So overall this really is a great set especially for its time. Remember we were a long ways away from the release of that big AT-AT so this was a great callback to the vintage AT-AT that was released you know back in the 80s. As I already mentioned I didn't really like the black speckles all over the place but it is what it is. Had some nice weathering overall to the vehicle. Obviously the addition of the electronics was great and this thing retailed for $80 if I'm remembering correctly. And so that wraps up this look at the ad at. I'd love to know your thoughts on this vehicle and figure set in the comments section below. And as always, thanks for watching.